What's up guys, Luke here from Luke's Points and Miles and today I want to talk about what card I am considering getting in 2023. This should be a surprise to some folks because I've always been an American Express man and I have no plans of leaving the Amex ecosystem anytime soon. But I've recently gotten my foot in the Chase door by getting approved for the Chase Inc. trifecta and having used Chase cards and having some experience using their system in the last few months, I've decided to take a closer look at Chase's flagship top tier travel card. Today I'm going to tell you about the card and I'll tell you if I think it fits my travel needs in 2023. But if you are new here, I talk about credit cards, points, miles, cash back and travel. If you want to stay up to date on those things, then subscribe to the channel. I post consistently and I am always on topic. If you get any value from this video, then be sure to slap that like button for the YouTube algorithm and so I can know which kinds of videos you guys like. With that out of the way, let's get right into it. So a little about me. I have been using American Express as my primary credit card issuer and I've had some pretty good success in doing so. I do just about every type of traveling from solo travel as a couple and as a family, domestic and international, economy and first class and everything in between. For the last few years I've used the American Express Platinum as my primary high-end travel card and recently I've had my eye on the Chase Sapphire Reserve. I feel like this card is being undervalued. So let me go over the card and I'll tell you how I think it might fit nicely within my setup and if your travel is anything like mine, which is to say it's all over the board, then maybe this card could be for you as well. Before we get into any of this, it's important to note that this card does come with a premium $550 annual fee and authorized users are an additional $75 each. I wanted to point that out now. So let's see if this card is worth that hefty price tag. First things first, we all know how important and valuable sign-up bonuses are in this game. And this card has a sort of underwhelming sign-up bonus of 60,000 Chase Ultimate Rewards points for spending $4,000 in the first three months of card ownership. Now, that is not the most impressive sign-up bonus in the game, but it's also not bad. I feel like we've all been desensitized by the super giant bonuses lately. And well, you're just not getting that with a reserve. So how does the card earn? One thing you'll see here is with Chase, a lot of their benefits and value comes from using the Chase Travel Portal. And I'm not much of a fan of using travel portals of any kind. But we'll talk about how this could be an exception to that because of some additional benefits with the reserve. This card earns Chase Ultimate Rewards Points and most of us are familiar with this currency. The strong aspects of Chase Ultimate Rewards Points are their versatility because they are eligible to be cashed out for one cents per point. Using the Chase Sapphire Reserve though, you have some other options. You get access to Chase's transfer partners and they definitely have some heavy hitters. For me, I really see Virgin Atlantic, Aeroplan, and Hyatt as some very strong options. Besides transferring UR points out to partners though, the power of the reserve is when it's used to book travel, through the Chase Travel Portal, those UR points get a 50% boost, making them worth 1.5 cents per point. That gives you some really good bang for your buck when booking domestic economy flights. To give you some perspective on the value of UR points when using the reserve, the sign up bonus of 60,000 Ultimate Rewards points would be worth $600 in cash back or $900 when booking through the Chase Travel Portal. So you can see that there are options when using a setup that includes the reserve, especially if you're someone who sort of straddles that fence between team travel and team cash back. Now we know how we can use UR points. How do we earn them with the reserve? Using the card to book flights through the travel portal earns five times points and booking hotels and car rentals in the same way earns 10 points. The reserve also earns three times on a very broad travel category after the first $300 spent on travel. That's because the reserve comes with an annual $300 travel credit, which considerably lowers that effective annual fee. 
Picard also earns three times on dining, including takeout, and 10 times ultimate rewards points on chase dining purchases, which I'll be honest, I'm not all that familiar with. So this card, while isn't exactly a grinder, it's definitely not a sock drawer card either. This one should stay in your wallet. So far we have the bonus, the travel credit, and how the card earns and spends. Let's get into the card's benefits to see if it makes sense at $550. The one important benefit is the card comes with what I call a real priority pass. This means you get access to over 1,300 airport lounges worldwide, but you'll also get the priority pass dining. This is important for some folks that find themselves traveling to smaller airports or airports that just don't have a ton of lounges. If you're a fan of the channel, you know that I value airport lounge access, but I have to admit that sometimes the ever-changing rules can be a bit frustrating. And yes, I'm talking to you, American Express. And sometimes traveling with children makes gaining entry to some exclusive lounges like the Delta Sky Club and the American Express Centurion Lounge challenging. For some of us, it might just be better to use the benefits at the restaurant. So I think this is a very valuable benefit. The card grants the user a credit for TSA PreCheck, Global Entry, or Nexus. I don't have any experience with Nexus, but if you ever plan to travel internationally, please do yourself a favor and get the global entry. It comes with pre-check and it can make your day much easier. Obviously, this being a premium travel card, this card has no foreign transaction fees, but I always wanna mention that because we're human and sometimes we forget those things. Now, this card really shines when we consider things we very rarely think about travel and purchase protections. You know, the boring stuff. I will put a slide on the screen if you wanna pause the video to read all of that, but the card comes with some powerful protections for both your purchases and your travel. One thing I do wanna point out is the card provides primary rental car insurance, so you can decline the insurance they provide and save some cash. If you're someone that rents cars while traveling, this benefit could be a must for you. There aren't tons of cards out there that provide this. Let's look at some more partner benefits that could be of interest to you. Using the card for lift rides earns you 10 times UR points until March 31st of 2025. If you find yourself using the rideshare service, that's a great way to earn. You get $10 monthly statement credit towards GoPuff orders until the end of this year December 31st, 2023. I've never used GoPuff, but if you give me 10 bucks, I'm probably gonna use it. You get a DoorDash Dash Pass for one year, which gives you $0 delivery fees, and it will also grant you $5 in credits at checkout each month. So we're seeing some of the coupon book techniques normally associated with American Express, but I think these are easily used. The card also provides you with a free Instacart Plus membership for one year. This gives you up to $15 credit monthly. Now, the membership is free the first year, but it auto renews, so put an alert on your calendar. We know the technical aspects of the card, but we need to decide how we would use it and if we would get enough value to justify that substantial annual fee. For me, it's at least $625 in the annual fees because my wife would need her own card. She does most of my spending for me. But right off the rip, I can subtract $300 from that due to the travel credit. But that still leaves me with $325 to figure out. Some of this won't be a math problem. What I mean by that is this, if you wanna book a flight with Delta or American and you don't have them as any type of transfer partner, then when using the reserve, you still have a good use case. Booking through the Chase Travel Portal will likely give you a very similar price when using points to pay, and you'll get a constant 1.5 cents per point from your ultimate rewards. I think that is pretty good for domestic economy for most flights, we can argue that between Delta, American, United, and Southwest, there is some variation, but a lot of times those points prices are fixed to the cash price, or at least it's close. This would mean I would not have to worry about acquiring American Airlines miles or Delta Sky miles. 
I can keep things simple and focus on earning Chase Ultimate Rewards points. And it also means that when I book a flight through the travel portal using Chase UR points, that ticket is earning airline miles and credit towards status in that particular program, just like it would if I purchased the ticket with cash. Booking international flights, especially in business class, will likely be a much better value if I use the transfer partners. So there's no advantage for the reserve over the other cards that would give me access to these partners. Using the reserve to book hotels is a little different scenario. Having Hyatt as a partner is great because you can often get over two cents per point, but Hyatt hotels aren't always the easiest properties to book with points. Every time I try, they tell me they're not accepting points. And using the portal, your stay likely won't count towards status or earn any loyalty points with that particular hotel because it's essentially booked through a third party. That doesn't seem to be too much of an issue. I could use points to book more boutique style hotels that really don't have an awards program, or I can just get a Chase hotel card, but neither of those things really help me justify this annual fee. So how do we make sense of the rest of this annual fee? Well, there are those credits with DoorDash, Instacart, and GoPuff, but I don't currently use any of those services, so can I count that as actual value? I will give you an honest assessment. When I first looked at this card, I was really excited. I thought, this is the card I need to push my credit card game to the next level in 2023. After reviewing the entire card, I have to say that I think I've changed my mind. I already have the Chase Inc. Preferred for access to those transfer partners. The Inc. Preferred also gives me a boost with the portal if only a 25% boost and not a 50% boost, which I do admit is substantial. For me, I just can't find the value with that high annual fee. I think it's a great card with great benefits and I don't wanna directly compare it to any other card, at least in this video, but I don't think it makes the cut. In my opinion, one of the biggest advantages of running a chase system is the option to really lower your total annual fees. Getting this card really pushes that at $550 or $625 yearly. Another aspect I find lacking with the reserve is the actual lounge access. I feel like Priority Pass lounges don't have a strong presence domestically, and I really think Chase needs to partner with someone like United to give reserve users real lounge access. Another perk that could make that annual fee seem more palatable would be some hotel status. Maybe some type of status at Hyatt or IHG would put me over the edge. That's the difficulty with everyone screaming about how great Hyatt is as a transfer partner, getting two plus cents per point, but never really reaching any meaningful status doesn't mean a whole lot to me. We do have videos on how to get five, seven, or even 10 cents per point with Chase Ultimate Rewards points. So two plus really won't knock my Aunt Connie's socks off in the grand scheme of things, especially when I can get access to that with a $95 annual fee card. So let me stop babbling on and give you exactly what I think about this card. I think it's dated. I think it needs a refresh. Not a fresh coat of paint with some random credits, but I think a full rehab. Keep the general idea, and I don't even mind the annual fee going up in line with some of the other premium travel cards. But as of right now, after reviewing the entire product, I'm not a buyer. Not at this time. My biggest strategy involves the transfer partners, and I have that access with the Chase Inc. Preferred. If you hold the reserve, please tell me the factors that make it a good value for you. We talked a little bit about the cashback option with the Chase setup, and if you're in the cashback, consider using a cashback shopping portal like Rakuten. They normally have better rates than the Chase shopping portal. Use my link in the description and get $30 cashback on your very first purchase of $30 or more. Do it, it's free money. Guys, that is all I have. If you've stayed around all the way to the end, I appreciate you and I thank every single one of you.